Section 6.5 is on inverse trigonometric functions. This is kind of a long section. Um, I strongly recommend that you go through it slowly and try to understand everything that you can because this is where students start losing track of everything uh, and, ha and having difficulties. <clears throat> So it's not that impossible or anything. It's just that they need to pay attention to all the details. So the trig functions are periodic, so they're not one-to-one. -one. That's the first thing to note. Okay, so thus their inverses are not actually functions. They're relations, but not functions. In order to get an inverse function, we need to cut out a piece of the trigonometric function that is one-to-one. -one. Okay, this is done by what's called restricting the domain. The restriction used varies for each trigonometric function. And so uh, I'll go through how this is done for sine, cosine, and tangent. And then from there, we can use the use x, uh, changing x to 1 over x to get inverses for the other three trigonometric functions. And I'll show you how that works when we get that far. <laughs> 